Yeah, hallelujah, praise. Praise the name of the Almighty, the great I am, the all-powerful, all-loving, all-knowing, all-kind, all-amazing Father that we have. May his name be continually exalted in the mouths of his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning and praise God. Yes, today's Tuesday, I know. Uh, yesterday was a prayer day. So we are here this morning. It's also the day of the Lord and we, his people, rejoice in the privilege that he's given us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in the past few weeks, we looked at food in a different light. How food can physically destroy us or spiritually defile our spirit and, and bring some contaminations that and sicknesses and afflictions that would not anticipate. But thanks be to God, he brings us understanding and awareness as to how to handle food and how to look at food from now onwards. And so we bless God and I trust that. Those few weeks podcast has been a blessing. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at this very important question. What is your voice? Not where, but what? Specific. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 10 that there are It may be so many kinds of voices in this world and none of them is without signification. That is the King James Version. So many voices. So many voices and none of them is without significance as the Bible will have us to understand. Every voice, including yours and mine, are significant. So what is your voice? When you look at scriptures, you know, there have been instances in the the Bible where when God calls a person and and they start making excuses, the biggest one was Moses. He said, I can't speak, I can't speak, I'm a (laughs) stammerer. That was a good one. He had a voice. God knew he had a voice. And that voice was to set the people of Israel free from captivity for over 400 years. And that man was given excuses that he was a stammerer. Hmm. And God came to Jeremiah and says, Oh, I'm a better child. I can't speak. I can't. God says, Don't say you are a child. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I have ordained you to speak for me to the people of Israel. Whether they will listen or not, it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is for you to speak. Say what God is telling you to say. Because our voices are significant, when you look at the systems of this world, well, for you and I, by the grace of God, we live in a democratic atmosphere, okay? Or maybe nation, where your voice must be heard, where there is no restriction as to what you speak or what you write about. Recently in the news, I had two companies being prosecuted because the materials that they posted on their social media handle was so harmful that in recent times, two people have have watched and listened to what they have shown about suicide and two lives have been lost. And the people were going to be, those two social media handles have been brought to book. They were in court and they have to, they had to answer for the content of their voice. It means that they had the opportunity to, 
to share or to speak. But what is being shared and what is being spoken is so significant. And that's what the Bible said. No voice. For those people, their voices were negative and the consequences was that they've caused the lives of two people. We have a voice. The Bible says to us in Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 20, it says, For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God's workmanship. The Greek word for that workmanship is poema, which, you know, we get the word poem in English. Poem, a poem is lyrics put together to signify something that is important. And we are God's lyrics. If we are God's lyrics, it means we are God's, God's voice. If we are God's voice, it means we have something to say to humanity. When Isaiah had a revelation of God or had an encounter with God, the first thing like he said was that, oh my God, I am a man with an unclean lips. He knew God was calling him to say something, to speak his words. But for him, as a young man, his, his voice or his tongue had not been clean in the past. So the Bible says the angel of the Lord took a call from the fire, fire of the altar and touch his lips and his lips were cleansed. What it means is that he had a previous voice that was unclean. Now, God had corrected his voice to speak for him. Maybe you're saying that, oh, maybe I don't speak well. I don't do this. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know this. God is in the business of correcting that which is not so clean and purifying it for his good purposes. And then we come to the New Testament and there is one man that was prophesied about in Isaiah 40, verses 3 and 4. So the man was spoken about in the Old Testament hundreds of years before he was born. And his testimony was that the voice, he was the voice of one crying in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord, to make straight in the desert a highway for our God. That every valley shall be exalted and every mountain or hill be brought low. The crooked places be made straight and the rough, rough places smoothened. That the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see you together. For the mouth of the Lord had spoken. Hallelujah. That's beautiful. Before this man was born, he was prophesied about by Isaiah. That his assignment, what he was, that he was a voice. And it was a specific voice. And that voice was to do what? To prepare the way of the Lord to make straight in the deserts and also in the highways. <laughs> For God, that every mountain will be leveled and hills and valleys be exalted, crooked places smoothened by one voice. Oh, hallelujah. Bye. One voice. And it's to what? It's to the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord should be revealed. There is a glory of the Lord in you that must be revealed. When that voice that God has given you is utilized to his glory. Maybe your vo the voice is in writing books or poems or speaking. I remember growing up, I used to be a stammerer as well, and talking was not very much my forte. Until I became a believer, I received the Holy Ghost baptism, and God released my tongue, and he said to me, I have made you a voice to the voiceless. You will speak for those who can't speak for themselves. And I'm saying, why me? And here we are, decades later, 
I think I found my voice. And my voice is to encourage your voice to be awakened for your creator. The one who has called you for the season that you find yourself. Maybe a short message for you. Maybe it is God is calling you to do, start a podcast yourself. Listen, I didn't know how. A few months ago, I didn't know. Maybe I heard something about podcasts. I didn't know. I didn't investigate. I had no clue until the Lord spoke to me specifically to start a podcast. And I said, what? What, did, what is this and what do I do? And I started researching it and I found that it was very easy. And I had a wonderful woman of God who literally held my hands through the process and brought me to the place that I find myself now. And to the glory of God, you are listening. And as I, I checked how many people and how many nations that I found out that now as we speak, 29 nations, 24 nations regular, five nations every now and then listening to this podcast. And I bless God that I was not disobedient to the heavenly voice that spoke to me to speak. Because I was not disobedient, now you are listening. And God has called the people to listen to your voice. And so you have to wake up to that assignment. And the man was who? John the Baptist. So John the Baptist found himself, you know, baptizing people, working exploits, really speaking in the power, by the power of God, calling people on to repentance. And some Pharisees and some people came to him and they asked him, so who are you? <laughs> are you the Messiah? Are you the one to come? Are you the prophet? And he said to them, no. John 1, 22 to 23, confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, then who? <laughs> who then are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. And I said to him, who are you? That we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? Oh, hallelujah, I like, I love that question. I don't just like it. Who do you say about yourself? Who do you say about yourself? Who do you say and what do you say about yourself? And the John the Baptist had come to the place because all the years that he was born, he had come to that revelation, that understanding of who he was. And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness to make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Oh, hallelujah. So John the Baptist identified himself. He came to know that he was the one that Isaiah prophesied about hundreds of years. Do you know who you are? So that you can give an answer to those who question you. Maybe God has brought you into a profession, an assignment, a grace, an anointing, something. There's something specific about you that God wants the world to benefit. And that is your voice. And God is calling you not to be silent. In the time of John the Baptist, he was preaching everywhere. In the wilderness of Judea, and he was saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. For the kingdom of God is at hand. He was telling, bringing people into repentance. That was his assignment. To bring down, to level every mountain and hill. Anything that had exalted itself above the knowledge of God till then, John the Baptist was assigned to do just that. And to exalt those things that had been, that, that been brought low. Exalt them. The right voice of God that has been silenced for centuries. He was the one to 
lift it up one more time. To smoothen that crooked paths. All those mis misconceptions, that false doctrines people were compounding. Bringing people into bondages. The religious people there were, were, they were just taking advantage of people. They were just exploiting people. And John said, I have been called to straighten all those crooked places. Called people. Brood of vipers come on to repentance. Hallelujah. That man gave it so straight. That was his voice. To baptize people unto repentance. To exalt the voice of God that has been silenced for many years. And to bring down every other voice and any other voice that has been exalted. The hills of injustice. Take people being taken advantage of. He brought them all down. He spoke with confidence. What is holding you back? Listen, everybody is talking. There are movements in this world. Every those who feel that they have the rights. You live in the in the West. You have rights. Even in Africa, yes, people have rights. They are speaking out for what they feel that they they have the right to advocate for. Maybe there are other parts of the world that you don't have that that. But there is something you can do that also will signify signify. Your voice. You might not say it in many words, but you might you can do it in many ways to signify that this is my voice, the voice of God for what He had called me for. In that profession, in that grace, in that art, in that beauty, in that which God has placed in your heart. Maybe you're saying I don't even know. Find out. Listen. To the voice of God. Listen to others. Not just anybody. The right people. Christians. Prophets. Teachers. Apostles. Your friends might even be telling you. Oh you're very good at this. Don't dismiss it. Oh it's nothing. It is something. That is your voice. Don't diminish it. Don't extinguish it. Your voice must be heard. And God is calling you. And so for me, I'm asking you, which one is yours? Which one of all those voices that have been heard, they are speaking in all those social media handles, people call themselves influencers, they are influencing negatively. But you can be that positive voice out there that is calling God's people, telling people how much God loves them, how much God, Christ came to die, that they would not have to die in their sin, they don't have to die in their pain. That there is healing, there is restoration, there is, there is love and acceptance for them. There's an identity for them in Christ. Maybe you are that voice. So find out quickly before the enemy silences you forever. So which one? What is your voice? Make your voice heard. Because you are God's poema. You are his lyrics. So shine. Rise up and shine. This is your moment. This is your season. This is your time. God bless you as you speak. May the Lord anoint your voice as you speak and as you do. In Jesus' mighty name. Love you guys. God bless you. Don't stop talking. Let that great voice, that great gift in you speak. That talent, that ability, speak for your king. In Jesus' name. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Love you guys. See you again next time.